Miami. We're about ready to start today's ball game between the Samurai Mustangs and the Redwood Giants. Deep for the Giants is number 84, Corey Shakarian, along with number 41, Tony Freitas. Kicking off for Sam Moran is number five, Brett Kim. And we're underway with today's ball game. Deep now, Davey has the ball, fumbles it. He's picked, picked up by Shakarian, runs to the outside. And he's taken down by a few Mustangs on the play. So the Giants will start off with the ball, first and 10. Ball resting at about the 25 yard line. Good kick by Kim right there. He takes the ball deep. Davey has a little bit of trouble with it bouncing off his chest, but he makes a good recovery, but there's just not much opening. The hesitation with him dropping the ball gave the Mustangs time to come downfield and make the play. Starting lineups for the Giants in the backfield. Number 10, quarterback Matt Rees. Number 24, running back Brett Schaefer. Running back 49, and that's Paul Hunt. We'll have the rest of the starting lineups in a second. Hand off inside going to Schaefer. Schaefer runs for about four yards up through the middle. Be second down. Wide receivers for the Redwood Giants. Number seven, Jason Stewart. Number 84 is Corey Shakarian. Tight end, number 85, Jerry Soho. Up on the front line, 77 is Montano. 71, Brown of the tackles. The guard, 61, Cannon. 68, Felix. And the center, number 52, Lee Levine. Here's a look there at Matt Rees. Rees is a senior quarterback, 6'1", 175. Handed off inside, now going to Paul Hunt. He slips down on the inside for a pickup of about three on the play. Sam Moran will start out basically with a 4-3 defense to set up with a strong line, Mike. Well, there you see Hunt taking the ball, and he looks like he got a little bit tripped up before being hit. The Mustangs up front, very strong, experienced line. Up front, number 75, Eric Stuyvesant. He's got a little help there. Number 76, Dave Spenrad. Matt Reese, quarterback, third down and about five. Reese dropping back to pass, looking across the middle. Stewart, it's complete, first down. Matt Stewart picks up about 15 on the play. Stopped by number one, Charlie McCoy, the safety on the play for the Mustangs. You see Reese getting a lot of time here. Fakes a handoff there, drops back in the pocket, and there's Stewart wide open. Good pass, good catch, good gain for the Giants. First down, Giants now on their 42-yard line. Hunt and Schaefer in the backfield. Ray sets up inside, hands off, going now to... Hunt, rather Schaefer the carrier on the play. He's going to pick up about four yards. It'll be second down and six. Well, there's Reese again giving the ball to Hunt. Gets a little bit of running room right there after a key block for a good pickup for the Giants. Ball resting on the 48. Shift into eye formation by Hunt and Schaefer. Handoff going to Schaefer up the middle. Schaefer bulldogs his way for about maybe three yards. Stopped in the middle by Salard. And a little help there by McCoy. <laughs> Brett Schaefer taking the ball and meeting a host of Mustangs at the line of scrimmage. Not much room for Schaefer to run there. Fortunate to get the ball back to the line of scrimmage. The Mustangs are trying to sustain this drive to get possession to show off that high potent offense that they lead the conference in. Third down on a bound long two for Matt Reese and company. Going inside, Hunt, he's going nowhere. Stacked up on the line that time was Hunt. It'll be fourth down and maybe a yard to go for first down. Is number 75, Stuyvesant, in on the tackle. Stuyvesant, Sergeant, and Spenrad. Front line for the Samarin Mustangs. Fourth down on about a yard. 
Hunt and Schaefer and I formation. Hunt the deep back. Hand off to Hunt. He goes up the middle. He's going to be short. The Mustangs will be taking over on possession on this one. As Rasmussen stopped the play for the Mustangs. 42, Brian Rasmussen. Well, Redwood gambling a little bit here in the first quarter. Hunt taking the handoff, but the Mustangs were ready for him. And as you said, Tucker, they did come up short. So the drive by the Redwood Giants is stopped, and Sam Moran will take over first and 10 on their own 49-yard line. Led by number 16, Rich Salardi, quarterback. He's got number eight, Brett Carolyn, wide receiver. Charlie McCoy, number one wide receiver. In the backfield will be Kim and Liberta. And Brett Kim up the middle, breaks a few tackles. He's still going up the middle. Gets into the secondary. Brett Kim drives for about 22 yards on the play. Brett Kim is the fullback, 5'9", junior. Very strong running back. You can see he takes the handoff right there. Eludes two tacklers, and he mows up field for some good yardage for the Mustangs. First and 10, ball on the 30-yard line. Serlotti sets up outside pitch to Liberta. Liberta goes outside, cuts back in. Met by a gang of Giants there to stop him on the play for about a short yard. Second down and nice. You get a look there, Rich Serlot. Last week, Mike passed for over 300 yards. Now gives him, uh, it's got to be about over 1,000 for the season, Mike. Is it true? Yeah, he's over 1,000 yards already with a few games to play. Last week, as you said, he threw for 313 yards, 18 for 36 on the day. Solardi hands off to Liberta once again. Liberta's wrapped up in there by number 50, 68, John Felix, linebacker for the Redwood Giants. Well, there's Solardi giving the ball to Roberta, and the Giants meet him just about the line of scrimmage and draw him back. Look there at Coach Ross Bracken, whose team has yet to win a game in conference play on the season. Last week, barely lost one to Tara Linda by one point. Had an opportunity with a missed field goal with about 2.44 to go in the period. 6.20 to go in the first period, no score. In motion now is Minitoli. Dropping back Solati to pass, looking to the outside, going across the middle, pass complete to number 84. That's the tight end, Frank Miff said. So the tight end gets the first down for the Mustangs. Well, Sarlotti rolling around to his right. You could see why he has 1,000 yards in the season. That's just a perfect pass to miss said. And the tight end takes it close to the goal line for the Mustangs. Mustangs on the drive now. Sarlotti hands offside to Liberta. He goes up the middle, picks up about two yards on the play. As the Mustangs are trying to drive on their first possession. Season ball club, the Mustangs. You take a look at their huddle and their leader, Rich Salart. Everyone in pursuit of the Marin Catholic Wildcats. Up the middle. Liberta again on the carry. He's a workhorse inside, Mike. Liberta's got pretty good size, as you said. He's 5'9", but he's 170 pounds, and he uses all his 170 pounds bowling forward. Again, we'll see Sarlotti giving the ball, and Liberta going forward for two yards. Mustang's very close to the goal line now. Third down and goal. Liberta up the middle again, and he's going to be stopped at about the two-yard line. It'll be fourth down and goal for the Mustangs. Coach Bracken is shouting out instructions from the sideline to his team. Has that tight giant defense trying to hold on. Charlie McCoy coming in with the play for Solardi from the sidelines. As Mike mentioned the Mustangs are two and two in conference play. Solat sets up, hands outside, going to 
Brett Kim, and he's going to score. Take that back. That's Ron Liberta going in for the Mustangs. So Sam Moran takes over 6-0. Mike? Well, you can see Liberta taking the handoff again. They've tried to go through the middle of the two previous plays. There was nothing there, but the Giants let them have some room on the outside, and Liberta takes it in the end zone. Brett Kim into attempt a point after for the Mustangs. Shot up by Kim. Drive to the outside. It's good. 4.30 to go in the first period. The Samarin Mustangs score in their first possession. They lead the Redwood Giants 7 to nothing. Mike, a little recap there on the drive. Well, the Mustangs, good balanced offense, good on the ground and good in the air, and they showed it all there. A couple key runs, a couple key passes by Sarlotti, and they're in for six. It's a very warm afternoon here in Larkspur. Beautiful afternoon at that. Homecoming for the Redwood Giants. And Coach Ross Bracken's got a very spirited ball club. They're getting better as weeks go on. Coach Zecklin said earlier in the week he can't believe this team hasn't won a ball game because they're a very strong-looking ball club. So Brett Kim will be set to kick off again. Deep for number 80. That's Adam Saltzman along with uh, Shakarian. And there's going to be an illegal procedure call against Sam Moren as one of the guys left a little too soon on the kickoff. Offside penalty against Sam Moren. Brett Kim's got a good foot for the Mustangs. Last kickoff, he put the Giants deep, and he did it again this time, and he also boomed that field goal in pretty easy. moves the Mustangs back five yards on the kick. No kick from the 35. Kim gets another low line drive off. Picked up this time by Shakarian. He gets to the outside, breaks up the go. middle, found a little room, and taken down at about the 35, and we got a flag on the play. Might be a late hit there. He was tackled by number 23. It's a Rather make it 22, Dave Limby. And we'll see what the penalty is called. Ray made the tackle on the run back. <laughs> Corey Shakarian taking Brett Kick's kickoff. And heading straight for the wedge there. Shakarian, good straight ahead runner. He takes a good hit right there by the San Marin special teams. And they're still debating that penalty right now. So you take a look at our officials there, and they're going to mark this one off against the Mustangs. As you see, the head referee, Pete Dardis, in the white cap. And there's going to be a personal foul called against the Mustangs. Our officials for today's game, referee Pete Dardis. The umpire is Jerry Gillespie. Head linesman Larry David and the line judge Ray Kalazi. So the Giants will have first and ten ball on the 47-yard line. So Matt Ray's and company sets up. The Mustangs are in a 4-2-4 defense. 4-3-4, four, four, excuse me. Outside crossbuck going to Schaefer. He's going to pick up about four yards on the play. Tackled by number one, Charlie McCoy. Brett Schaefer, the junior, second year on varsity. Good runner for the Giants. You can see him eluding a few tacklers there and gets good yardage for the Giants. Schaefer, Mustangs strong running back. Excuse me. Sorry about that, Mike. Mustangs just setting up in that 4-3 once again, trying to combat against the Giants. And beautiful defensive play that time by number 84, Miss Bud, as Schaefer gets nowhere. 
So they've lost a few yards on that play. You see Mifsud going in, making the tackle. So it'll be third down and about a long nine. Reese is in the shotgun formation. Going in motion now, Shakarian. Reese dropping back to pass, going outside now, Shakarian. Shakarian, Mike in the first down, he will. Stopped on the play that time by number 50, John Abers. Watch how this develops, Mike. Matt Reese in the shotgun formation, takes a snap, he gets pretty good time, and there's Corey Shakarian going to the outside, makes a good catch, and the Giants got things rolling again. So the Redwood Giants haven't had much problem getting their offense going. The passing game seems to work pretty good. They can continue to nickel and dime the Mustangs. This might get them a score. Mustang territory, the ball's at the 42. Reese rolling out to his right. Got some blockers in front, looking to pass, finds some room at the middle. He's going nowhere. Tackled on the play by number 76. And that's Spinrad with a little help from Sargent. Good coverage downfield by the Mustangs, and Reese did the right thing. He had a an opening for a second, but Spinrad and company came in to shut it down. Loss of four in the last play. Loss of four in a play as Sargent, Sargent leaving, the leaving the field right now for the Mustangs. We have 2.34 to go in the first period of play. Samer ends up 7-0. You take a look there at Matt Reese. Reese is a senior. 6-1, he's sitting now in the shotgun formation. Hunt standing beside him. Coming inside after him, missing the play as Abers. Reese fakes, going outside, and being tackled on a play by number 42, Rasmussen. And there's a penalty flag call, thrown on a play, rather. Matt Reese doing a good job there again with that pump fake. Kept the defense back, and he picked up some yardage on the ground. Uh, I guess there is no flag on the play. Second down and about maybe 11, third and 11, excuse me. Mustangs are in quick on them that time. They're in the Redwood backfield awful quick. Reese didn't have any time to throw the ball. The Redwood Giants trying to get on a get on a winning scourge here all of a sudden. Reese rolling out to his right, finding room. He slips and falls. He was looking to throw that one down to number 80, Adam, Adam Salsman. And he slipped and fell. So it'll be fourth down now for the Giants. As they will have to turn over the ball to the Mustangs. Well, Reese rolling right, and that turf still wet from the rains we had. And his feet just give out from under him. Holzmer back to kick for the Giants. Deep for the Mustangs. And number 44, Russ Daly. Number eight, Red Carolyn. Brett Carolyn, rather. Called him by his father's name. The high punt drops down on about the 30. This is only going to be about a 10-yard punt. So the Mustangs will get this one first and 10, about their 30-yard line. Unfortunate for the Giants having re-slip right there. They seem to have things rolling pretty good, but not much you can do with the wet field like that. That is very tough. Timeout called by the Mustangs as Salat looked a little indecisive about what was going on. While we have a moment here, let's talk about the standings in the MCAL. And a game already happened this weekend. Had a lot of bearing on the championship of the conference. And Mike, tell us a little bit about that ball game. Great game in San Rafael, Miller Field. The Wildcats and the Bulldogs going at it pretty good. And the final score is 7-6 Wildcats. So they got a one-game lead over the Terralinda Trojans. 
and a two-game lead over the Bulldogs. But Larry Gondol, the coach for the Wildcats, made a good point after the game. He said uh, that game could possibly give the Bulldogs a wild card berth in the NCS playoffs. So good showing by the Bulldogs. It was a rainy day on that ball game. Not too much offense conducted by the ball clubs, but uh, that missed extra point was a difference. And you contribute that definitely to a slippery turf. Well, the fields haven't been rained on in a good six months, so when it does rain, it seems to cause some problems this early in the season. In the rainy season, that is. Solardi setting up. Hands off inside now, going to number 25. That's Keith Phillips. In the backfield now, picks up about six on the carry. Well, here's Phillips again, just taking the ball right off the right side. Before he's brought down, he still picks up six yards. I think that's going to be the key for the Giants this afternoon, is to slow up that Mustang running game a little bit. Their passing game, they're going to get their yards. you got to give them that. But the running game has to be slowed up a bit if Redwood wants to stay in this one. Minotoli and Carolyn split to the outside. Salad going back to pass. He's got a little pressure. Rushing up Felix coming after him. Dumps it down to number 20, Liberta, and he's going to pick up maybe enough yardage for the first down. Good pressure that time by Felix of the Giants. Well, here comes Felix right in on Sarlotti with a host of other Giants. But he's got good poise in that pocket, and he sees Liberta for a pickup. As you take a look there at the Mustangs, a very strong-looking ball club. Carolyn and McCoy coming down to the bottom of the screen. The backfield has got Liberta along with 22, and that's Dave Lemby. Hand off inside. And might be short, and that's the end of the first period of play. With a score, the Samarin Mustang 7, Redwood Giants nothing. We'll be back with second period action right after this. Have you ever listened to a baseball game? It's a tie ball game! How about that? There's so much to hear, but Giselle has never clearly heard a single play or her mom's voice. She's deaf. A hearing aid can help, but the real answer lies in research. The Deafness Research Foundation is trying to find cures for the 16 million hearing impaired. Won't you help? Support the Deafness Research Foundation. There's so much to hear. The Mustangs will start out the second period of play with the ball fourth down and about a half yard to go in their own 39 yard line. Mike, a summary of the first quarter. Well, as I said earlier, the Mustangs using a variety of weapons against the Giants to bring it down for six points and then kicking in the field goal. And Redwood doing a pretty good job on offense themselves. But the Mustangs just doing a little bit of better job on defense. Carolyn back to kick for the Mustangs. Gets off a high kick. Shakarian's going to let it drop. No, he's going to come get it. Gets upfield. Gets stopped on the play by number 30, Vince Maraki. And the Giants will take over. The Giants have not had bad field position. The offenses look pretty good. And you can tell the improvements are going along with this ball club as Coach Bragging gets them more familiar with his system and what he likes to see them run. Number 44 coming into the ball game is Rick Davey coming out of Shikarian. As the Giants will start on their possession. First and 10 ball on the 32 yard line. Split outs Jason Stewart. Handoff goes to Schaefer, and he got tripped up right at the line of scrimmage. scrimmage rather. <laughs> he might, <laughs> might have enough to get back to the line of scrimmage. Sergeant stopped him on the play. Mustang's doing a good job getting in the giant backfield again. Brett Schaefer getting the handoff there, and I don't think he took a half a step before he was hit. Mustangs, one of the strong defensive teams in the conference. Davey now comes out, along with number 85. And that's Jerry Soho, the tight end. Got a three-receiver split here. Stewart, Schaefer, and number 83, Hosmer. And a block pass on the play by number 50, Abers. It looked like they had a wide-out screen set up for that time, and Abers able to stop that play. As you said, John Abers coming in from right around the end, the bottom of your screen, and there he is. And he just bats that one away. Giants call a timeout on the play before the next series. Once again, I want to refer back to that 
As you take a look there, Coach Ross Bracken, back to the league standings. As you take a look there, the Marin Catholic Wildcats after that game are 5-0 in a conference with Sam Rafael. And that will put Tara Linda in second, 3-1. and one. Sam Rafael drops in a tie for third with Tamil Pius at 3-2. and two. Sam Marin is fifth at 2-2. Two and two. Drake is in sixth place, 2-3. and three. Richmond, 1-3 and three in seventh. Novato, 1-4 and four at eighth. And Redwood, 0-4, oh bringing up the rear. Now, that game had big bearing with Sam, Sam Rafael and Marin Catholic. But there are two games left to go in the conference. And next week, the Wildcats host the always tough Drake Pirates. And that could clinch the championship for them because they have played Tara Linda and Tamil Pius and defeated both ball clubs. Beautiful sunny afternoon here in Larkspur. Couldn't ask for a better day for football except the fact we've had rain most of the week. Turf is a little sloppy, as Mike said. But the players seem to have held up pretty well, don't you think? Yeah, it's tough, like I said, Tucker, the first rain of the season to get that grip going on those cleats, but they've done pretty good so far. Reeves going outside, trying yeah. to hit, and he did. Number 24, Schaefer, as Brown tried to make a play on the ball, almost intercepted it. Well, that was just a good pass there by Matt Reese. He was under some pressure. And there was a Samarin defender right there putting his hand in front of Brett Schaefer, and Schaefer makes a great catch. Fourth down now and three. Going back to kick is Hosmer. He's got receiving for the Mustangs. You've got Carolyn and number 44, Russ Daly. And nice kick by Hosmer. Fair catch called by <laughs> Daly when he saw that Stewart was right there in his face. He wasn't about to give it a try. Mustangs will start first and 10. Not a bad punt this time. Gets some good height on it and allows Jason Stewart, who has some great speed, to get downfield and rattle those footsteps and give the Mustangs something to think about. So the Mustangs will have it first and 10. Ball in the 31, let's say 32-yard line. Limby and Phillips in the backfield with Solardi split out. Charlie and McCoy, tight slots are misfud and along with Carolyn running outside is Phillips. Phillips squirms out for about 10 yards on the play. Stopped by number 84, Shakarian, with the help of a few other Giants. The Mustang line is doing a good job there, getting some blocks for the running backs. And there Phillips takes it around the left end for a big pickup for the Mustangs, another first down. It's a strong suit of their offense is the running game, definitely. Giants are sitting in a 5-2. Salard hands off inside now to Phillips. Phillips breaks a few tackles, takes a shot, and goes down. Coming in on the tackle is number 25. And that is Rick Vangren for the Giants. Well, there again, the Mustangs trying to go up the middle this time. Vangren come in and making the stop. Having most of their success so far going around the ends. Redwood's doing a pretty good job uh, clogging up the hole in the middle. Split out is McCoy. Solardi goes inside, running up the middle is Liberta. He breaks about four or five tackles. Picks up the first down. Stopped by number 57 with a little help from Grandren, Vangren, rather, at 57. That's Brian Uell on the tackle. Well, just as I was talking about Redwood clogging up the middle, there goes Liberta up the middle for another first down for the Mustangs. So they're getting the running game going here in the second quarter. Now, Coach Bracken will use from time to time a 3-4, 4-3, 5-2 in passing situations to try to put more pressure on. Right now, the Mustangs are finding that middle is a nice place to run. Going up the middle, Liberta trying it again. Rather, let's make that number 22, Dave Lemby. Lemby stopped that time by number 49, Hunt. So it'll be second down and about maybe six to go. Make it a long six. Again, the Mustangs going towards the middle. And they find some more success with a four-yard pickup by Dave Lemby. Redwood's got to slow that running game down somehow. Get where you can read. Get where you can read. 
Limby and Phillips in the backfield. Another make that Brett Cameron. Flags are going everywhere. And it's against the Mustangs, a legal procedure. Back him up five yards. We'll make it second down and about ten. Five yards. Second and eleven. All down to 44. Well, Sarlotti giving the handoff again, and they're going towards the middle before the yellow flags went flying. So Samarin keeping that ball on the ground where they're finding a lot of success and you can't really blame them. If it doesn't, if it works, don't fix it rather. Second down 11 for the Mustangs. Going up the middle now is Phillips. Phillips dives forward for about seven yards. And a penalty flag is down on the play. And it's gonna be holding against the Mustangs. The Mustangs, excuse me, Tucker, Mustangs with 55 yards on the ground already. And we'll see here again, that was another seven-yard pickup before the holding penalty. They're going right towards the middle now. They heard me talking about them going around the end, so they showed me they could go through the middle also. We have a moment here. You have another score from uh, this weekend already, uh, Mike. Yeah, the Novato Hornets shut out the Richmond Oilers 12 to nothing. And probably one of the highlights of the game was their 310-pound lineman, Jim Balin, carrying the ball into the end zone for the Hornets. Yeah, another fridge. Second down and about 18. Screen play developing. Going outside Liberta, he drops it. So it'll bring up third down. Well, Sarlotti dropping deep into his pocket right there, setting up that screen pass. And it just slips right to the receiver's fingers. This series working out fine now for the Giants as they back up the, the Mustangs. In a third and 19 situation. The ball on the 46-yard line. Most of the action, Mike, has been right in front of us here at midfield. Yep, between 40 and 40 so far, Tucker, you're right which is fine with me. Carolyn in the backfield. Along with Limby. Carolyn in motion. He has the back pass going. Slater is back on his man. Carolyn throwing back across the middle, trying to reach over to Miss Sud. Carolyn just couldn't get that going. You could see that play developing right about here. He just turns and fires behind the line of scrimmage and Carolyn, look, you didn't really even get a grip on the ball. That wasn't really intended for anybody. Well, you have to see this. If you had a chance to see it where we couldn't, Slater made the change of mind situation for Carolyn as he was on top of McCoy. That was Carol's first option, Carolyn's first option. Slater was all over McCoy. Back to punt now, Carolyn. Gets a wobbly kick off and going, and it heads out of down to about maybe the 20 it rolls and the Giants will take over first and 10 there we've got 739 to go until halftime the game's going along pretty quickly here Mike yeah it is not too many penalties so far but Mustangs getting a big penalty on that holding call after a seven yard pickup and I think that hurt their drive got our statistician back today are we keeping him in line Mike or what oh yeah he's all right yeah well, don't tell him that <laughs> All he needs is a pencil per game. And <laughs> satisfied. Hadn't broke any yet, has he? Nope. <laughs> Matt Reese trying to get the Giants going here on their next possession. Quick pass outside. Hits Hunt. Hunt goes, takes Carlin for a ride for about seven yards. Well, so far, Matt Reese showing some good accuracy with his passes for the Giants. He hits Hunt on that screen pass. And the Giants pick up about five yards. Coming out is number 84. And that's Corey Shakarian. Stewart split to the bottom of the screen. Up top, he's got 46. Rees makes the call. Looks for Stewart across the middle. Stewart breaks the outside, and it's too far for him. As Rees completes one of his few passes that he has not completed today. Third and five. 
pass. Well, Jason Stewart running his down and out pattern, but that's the only place Reese could miss with the pass. If he throws it behind Stewart, it's picked off, as you see the Mustang okay. defender right there. Reese and company. Stewart comes down to the bottom once again. In the backfield. Lone setback. Third down. Going across the middle. Stewart. He completes it. This Jason Stewart is tough. Brown is having a heck of a time trying to guard him. Ray Brown trying to hold Jason Stewart. Stewart, as I said earlier, with exceptional speed. And he's got a good set of hands as he's displayed right there. Another good pass by Reese keeping the ball down. Jason Stewart, 5'9", Jr. will be back next year to terrorize some of these defenders. Jason Stewart with 25 yards receiving on the day. Shakarian, along with Joe Chi, split out to the top. Stewart at the bottom. Lone setback is Schaefer. He's met hard up the middle. Stopped that time by number 57, that's Sergeant. And Spenrad also, the defensive end, with a little help. Well, Reese dishing off to Schaefer right there, and here comes Spinrad and Sergeant to make the stop. They had a hole in there for a minute, but the Mustangs plugged it back up. That inside work of the Mustangs has always been strong throughout the season. Shikarian comes in now for Joe Chi. Saltzman in at the tight end. Stewart rolls out to his right, looking to pass. Going forward, pass is incomplete. Tried to hit Shakarian. That'll bring up third down and about eight to go. Well, as you're going to see here, that was a perfect pass by Matt Reese. Corey Shakarian just couldn't get the handle on it. There's Reese's pass, boom, right in the chest of Shakarian. Take a look there at the Giants in the huddle. Got a very strong front line. They've done their job so far, but the Giants just can't get it down toward the end zone. Hunt the single back in formation. Shakarian, Stewart at one end. Saussman also going out. Reese going deep now, heading up for Shakarian. He just missed it. Back defending on the play is number 20, Liberta, as Shakarian stopped to come back. And I think we've got a holding penalty called here on the Giants as well. As you said, the Giants line doing a good job getting Matt Reese some time, and he uncorks one there. Just off the fingertips of the receiver, Shakarian. No one could ever say that the Giants don't provide you with a little bit of excitement on that last offensive series. So the Mustangs declined a penalty. It'll be fourth down for the Giants, and Hosmer back to kick for the Giants. Carolyn, along with number 22, that's Dave Limby. In deep formation for the Mustangs. A nice kick by Hosmer. Carolyn's going after it, and he's met by Stewart. Breaks a tackle. But getting there to stop him on the play is number 57. And there's a penalty flag call. We're going to have unsportsmanlike conduct called here on the Mustangs. Well, as you said, a pretty good kick by Osmer. That snap was down low, and he went and got it. Got off a real good kick. Brian Uriel down to help make the tackle. Penalty flag called in the play, and I think we're going to have an unsportsmanlike conduct called, I believe, on 42. Rasmussen. And on Redwood. So we're going to replay this at the uh, down again as offsetting penalties were called. So the Mustangs don't quite get the ball yet. So it'll be fourth down again. And that's a personal foul was called on both teams. 4.55 to go in the period. Snap going back to Hosmer. He gets off the kick as he had a little rush going. It's going to take a giant bounce. It's going to roll good. This is going to get inside the 10, down to about the 8-yard line. So Hosmer gets off a good kick, and you can tell by the way that ball was rolling, Mike, that was going to be a good roller for the Giants. Sometimes those end-over-end -end kicks bounce straight up in the air, but fortunately for the Giants that time, it kept rolling towards the end zone. So Hosmer's kick is good. 
for the Giants. Deep in the territory now the Mustangs will start. So Sam Wren hadn't had much success against this defense as the Giants keep switching between the 5-2 and 4-4 defense. It's five down linemen, two linebackers, and a cross of four down and three, four linebackers. Salati going back for the deep pass. Wide open is McCoy. Gets it up to about the 30-yard line. He fumbles the ball, but it goes out of bounds. So the Mustangs quickly out of the hole. Mike? It looked like the Red de Redwood defense was giving him a little bit of a cushion there, giving the receiver some room to run, and they just came underneath and made the catch. Shakarian and Van Gren deep for the Red Giants on that play. As you can see right here, Sarlotti rolling back. It's only a pass, but there's a good four or five feet in between the receiver and the two defenders, which are behind him. So the Mustangs quickly out of the hole. If any way you can think of getting out, a nice pass for about 23 yards is good enough for any coach to get out of the hole. First down and 10. We're down to four minutes to go till halftime. Coming outside now is Phillips and a great tackle by number 44. And that is Ricky Davey. Phillips taking the handoff from Sarlotti and here comes Davey. Bam. No gain. Good tackle right there as Phillips had a little bit of running room. Second and 12 now for the Mustangs. The ball resting on the 28-yard line. They're having a hard time figuring out this defense. Salati going back to pass. He sees Minuto and Carlin together up the middle. Carlin's there. And he's going to be stopped short of the first down. Brett Carlin. Shakarian back defending for the Giants. And Sarlotti rolling down there. He sees nobody at first. Checks left. Nobody there. And there's Carolyn. As I said in the pregame show, Carolyn is his prime receiver. Both offensive lines doing a good job getting the quarterback some time this afternoon. Carolyn and both Kim, his top receivers, are both juniors. Strong conference players coming back. Third down and two. Going inside now. Fumble. And it's going to be Giants football, looks like. And the Giants recover the fumble. As Lemby couldn't hold on, trying to run with the ball. And the Giants defense first to get on the ball. Well, there's Lemby hitting the line of scrimmage and also hitting a giant player. And the ball just squirts loose. And a big play for the Redwood Giants, as this is probably their best field position of the day. 52, Lee Levine on the fumble recovery for the Giants. As Matt Reese and company start first and 10, just inside the 40-yard line of the Mustangs. Inside handoff going to Schaefer. Schaefer runs up the middle, picks up about maybe three or four yards. Tackled that time by Rasmussen. Well, Brett Schaefer again, running right through the middle there. Get some good blocks, and the Giants seem to have things semi-rolling here. Stewart out to the bottom of the screen, out to the left, up top. He's got Salzman along with Shakarian. Going deep now, Jason Stewart wide up in the middle. Great reception, breaks away from one tackle. Jason Stewart. One of the top receivers in the conference, Reese Stewart, but we've got a penalty that's going to nullify the whole situation. That's a heartbreaker right there, Tucker. Matt Reese throwing a good pass. Stewart with an excellent juke right there, and he takes a pretty good hit at the end. He broke away from Charlie McCoy, and he kept his concentration on the ball very well, very well. Well, this is going to hurt, of course. The Giants in good situation. They're going to be marked off. An illegal man downfield. And that's going to be a five-yard penalty, and it'll be third down. Boy, that takes it out right away, doesn't it, Mike? That's tough right there, that illegal man downfield. Sometimes the linemen just break loose a little too soon and get downfield. But uh, as you said, that is a heartbreaker for the Giants. Third down and 12 now in motion. It's Salzman. Reese in the shotgun. Flag again. Going outside. Stewart. Beautiful reception, but a flag is down again. If this gets nullified, boy, I tell you, Coach Bracken's going to be quite upset. 
What more can Jason Stewart do in one quarter? Another exceptional catch right there. Lease reads him, and Stewart makes the reception. Illegal procedure is called against the Giants after two outstanding receptions by Jason Stewart. Boy, that's going to be tough. Boy, that's going to be tough. And like I said, Coach Bracken doesn't like that after you get two good plays going. Legal procedure. Now we were talking earlier in the quarter. There are not many penalties so far in the game, and here's two in succession. Two big penalties. So the Giants have dropped back now to the 46. Third down and 17 to go. 132 and counting to go till halftime. Whatever play they're using this series, they're breaking that defense wide open. So now Sausman, along with Schaefer, going in motion now, is 85. And another flag's going to go down. Up the middle, going, intercepted by number 23. That's Nikolai. He's going to the outside and down. There's going to be a penalty probably called against Redwood. As we saw, number 85, Soho, going in motion. He did come forward. Well, it was a mix-up in the backfield right there. Soho coming forward, and there's Reese throwing the ball downfield to Stewart again, but there's four Mustangs waiting for Stewart this time. So now the Mustangs and the interception by Nikolai will take over first and ten. So now the Mustangs getting situated. That was a tough series right there for the Giants, having that happen, three, penal three penalties in a row. Salard so back to pass. He's looking to go deep, going for McCoy. Intercepted by Bangren, and they're going to call this one out of bounds. I tell you, Tucker, there's a flag down in the backfield. Looked like Red would put a late hit on Sarlotti. You'll see as soon as he lets go of the ball at the top of your screen, there's Sarlotti throwing the pass, so we're not going to catch it. But I do believe it's a late hit on the Giants. You're right. Roughing the passer called in that play, Mike. And that's four penalties and four plays for the Giants. Well, Rivet's just got to calm down a little bit and get their composure back. Think about what they're doing here. Four penalties in a row is unexcusable well, so far. Well, that ball is going to be placed in Giant territory in the 47. And I believe Coach Bracken's calling for a timeout on this series. Well, I think it's a smart call by him. Get out there and calm your guys down a little bit. So with 53 seconds to go until halftime, Samarin still leads 7-0. Mike, how about a little information from your area roundup there as far as some of the activities and athletics in the Wren County Athletic League? Well, the Redwood Giants soccer team winning yes or winning three to nothing over the Samarin Mustangs. That puts the Giants at eleven and two on the season and the Mustangs nine two and two. Drake defeated Marine Catholic two to nothing. And the Marine Academy was a victor three to one over Urban. And in volleyball, Marin Catholic taking Redwood three games, uh, 15 to 7, 16 to 14, and 15 to 10. So the Wildcats moving their way closer to the MCAL volleyball playoffs. They're going to have a tough time against Tara Linda, who's undefeated in volleyball play at 9 and 0. First down and 10 now. The ball is in the Redwood Giant territory. Carolyn split down to the bottom of the screen in back formation. He's got Limbian coming. Salati going across the middle. Schaefer was trying to go up with the interception as Liberta never saw the pass coming. Stops the clock with 49 seconds. Well, the Giants are trying to hold them down. Yes, Mike. Oh, excuse me, Tucker. We were talking about penalties. Redwood penalized for 30 yards in the last four minutes, and before that, they haven't had a penalty on the day. So quick penalty striking the Giants. The action has been fast and furious in a day. In our games of the week coverage, we have not been disappointed in any, uh, any action whatsoever. All teams have provided us with some Good plays this season. Once again, Solardi with the with Carolyn in motion, dropping back to pass. He's going Carolyn. We can see that coming. He's going Carolyn all the way. And pass is going to be incomplete, even though Carolyn caught it. Pass was intended for Carolyn. 
Rich Sarlotti showing his good arm, rolling to his right, throwing on the run. That's a tough thing to do. Get some good speed on the ball. Unfortunately, a little bit out of bounds. Nice catch by Brett Carolyn. Third and 10 now for the Mustangs. Clock down to 43 seconds. Coming in is Charlie McCoy, along with number 20, that's Liberta. Munitoli coming in. Munitoli, I should say, for the Mustangs. One wide out. The other wide out is Carolyn. And most of now is Liberta. And there's going to be a legal procedure called. Delay a game against Sam Marin. Not going to hurt too much, but it's going to cut down their first down possibility. Third down now and about 15. So get a look there at the Samarin Mustangs offensive huddle. As Salat is having a tough day today, these Giants aren't giving up too much on defense to him as far as the passing game goes. And motion is Carolyn. Salat going outside to his right. Looking to let this one go up the middle. It's complete. Liberta takes a shot from 84. Shakarian, and he's feeling it pretty good. That might be close enough for the first down, but we do have a penalty. Well, there's Salat rolling around looking for a receiver. Liberta taking the ball and taking a tremendous hit by Corey Shakarian. Illegal motion by the Mustangs, so that'll nullify that gang for Sam Marin. So they're going to be marked back now to about the 43. They'll be third down and 19. Both quarterbacks displaying good arms and the receivers displaying good athletic ability, but they're all being called back because of penalties. So third down now, as the Giants go into a prevent defense. In motions, McCoy, Salat going outside for the pass. He sees Carolyn across the middle, completion. Tackled by Saltzman, but they will be short now, fourth down, and the Mustangs will call timeout. This is excellent concentration on the part of Brett Carolyn. He's got three Giants around him and still makes the catch. The Giants are playing it soft and brother defense as you get a look there at Coach Tom Zecklin. That defensive backfield, Mike, for the Giants are playing soft and it looks like they're giving him too much room to pick up yardage like 10 and 15 yards. You're right. They're definitely giving too much room. The defender's playing a good five, six yards behind the receiver. And it's allowing Sarlotti to get the pass in there for big pickups for the Mustangs. Carlin's a big target, too. He's about 6'5". And Solardi himself is about 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, so that gives them both a good view of each other. And a guy like Carolyn, if he has his back to you, he's going to catch most of the balls. The Giants will have to be a little tighter on their defensive strategy here with the uh, receivers. You see now set up on defense, Mike, they're still back a little ways. Well, with four seconds left, they're probably going to give the... Uh, Mustang some room to work with. Last play of the half. A Hail Mary going up. And it's complete to Carolyn, but it's not going to be enough as the end of the first half of play is upon us. The Sam Marin Mustangs lead this ball the game 7 to nothing over the Redwood Giants. We'll be back with second half action right after this message. Davy Jones here. And ye be my kind of men, nary a life vest on ye. Fearless. Careless. Not a fear to drown and then dropping down to join me. Mutiny, eh? Oh, yeah. Well, others without their life vests will be signing up for Davy's Navy. <laughs> Don't drop into Davy Jones's locker. Wear your life vest. Land clubbers. Good afternoon, George Morella Travel. Hi, I'd like a round trip ticket from San Francisco to New York City. First flight out in the morning, okay? Yes, that'd be fine. Non-smoking window, okay? Non-smoking window, that's perfect. 
You're confirmed on flight 54, arriving at Kennedy at 4.50 p.m., and I'll get an itinerary out to you right away. Well, excellent, but I never thought it was gonna be this easy. I try to avoid complications. You're watching community programming on Viacom 36. The Giants will kick off to start the second half of play. D for the Mustangs are 25 and 20. That is Phillips 25 and 20 is Ron Liberta. Kicking off is Hosmer for the Giants. Line drive up through the middle. For a base hit. For a base hit. Liberta picks it up the middle. He's got running room stopped. Beautiful play there by Vangren to keep him from going all the way. So the, the Mustangs will start out first and 10. Ball in the 34-yard line. They'll come out with the same lineup they had in the first half. With Solardi at quarterback, wide receivers are Carolyn and McCoy in the backfield. They've got Limby and Liberta. Up front on the line. We'll get to that after this play. Handoff going to Limby. Rather, Liberta, the carrier on the play. The L and L family. Up on the front line for Sam Marin. You've got Sergeant 50 center, 57, the center. Frey and 67 label the guards, LaBelle. The tackles, 75 and 76, Stuyvesant and Spenrad. Second down and a long six. Liberta going in for the run and tackled at that time by number 57, Yoel, with a little help from Bangren. Well, there's Liberta getting the handoff, going around the left end, and there's Yoel in in a hurry to make the tackle for the Giants. Rich Sarlotti, six for eight for 93 yards in the first half. Brett Kim, nine yards and a touchdown on three carries. Laverta, 22 yards on seven carries. And Phillips, 23 yards on four carries for the Mustangs. Third down, six for Sam Moren. Phillips and Laverta in the backfield, throwing high outside to Carolyn and almost picked off there by number 80. That's Saltzman, Adam Saltzman for the Giants. So the Mustangs will have to kick this over now. So Lottie dropping back, rolling to his right and floating it up there. A little bit too high for Carolyn. Fourth down, six to go. As the defense holds, the offense will get set now for Redwood. See, it's a beautiful afternoon for football out here at Redwood High School in Larkspur. Carolyn deep to punt now for the Mustangs. Nice high kick. Sakarian picked it up, dives forward for about five yards, and Redwood will start from there. You got it. <clears throat> On the offense for the Giants, it'll be Matt Ray's at quarterback. Starting in the backfield, Schaefer and Hunt. Wide receivers is Stewart. Shakarian, the tight end, it's Jerry Soho. Up on the front line, you've got Montano and Brown at the tackles. Felix and Cannon, the guards, and Levine at center. The backfield split. Now they drop back into an eye. Reese going back to pass, looking for Stewart. Throws it across to Soho, and he's covered up pretty good there by Salati and uh, 23 Nikolai, the defensive back. Matt Reese looking downfield for Jason Stewart, but then he sees Soho coming up short here on the outside. And the ball's a little bit wide for Soho to handle. Reese, four for nine for 40 yards in the first half. Brett Schaefer, 13 yards rushing. And Jason Stewart, 25 yards receiving, and 40 yards were taken away from him because of penalties. Second and 10. Cross buck inside now. Going to Schaefer. He might pick up five on that one. 
So the third down to go for the first. Oh, Brett Schaefer taking the ball, going right towards the middle, carrying two defenders with him, and he picks up five yards on the play. The Giants have not had bad field position all day, just unable to sustain a drive. 7 nothing. Sam Moran. We're just into the third period, 9.32 to go. In motion is Stewart. Shotgun formation, Rays going outside, Stewart intercepted. By number 13, Brown, he might go all the way. He's going to be stopped out of bounds on about the... The officials will mark it at about the 9, 8-yard line. As that play, Brown smelled that one out pretty easily. Good smart play by Ray Brown. You could see Reese looking downfield for Jason Stewart, but here comes Brown, steps in and makes the pickoff. He only had one person in mind on that series, looked like Mike, and that definitely was Jason Stewart, and the defender read his eyes. He definitely was looking left the whole way, and that might have gave Brown a little bit of a tip-off. A break now for the Mustangs. They start first and goal on the Giants' eight-yard line. McCoy is now in the backfield with Liberta. <laughs> Carolyn split out. Now Liberta leaves the backfield going as a wide receiver. McCoy in motion. Going across the middle, open for the touchdown is number 84 for the Mustangs. And that's the tight end, Frank Mifsud. Sarlotti dropping back and just floating it up there for Mifsud. And the Mustangs strike quick again. Brad Kim will come in to attempt the point after for Sam Marin. So other than that miscue, the Giants are still were in that uh, good position until now, but they've got plenty of ball game left to go. Snap by the Mustangs. We've got a legal procedure as the right guard, left guard, moved on the play, and they'll have to re-kick. Official Pete Dardis making the call. Illegal procedure against San Moran. Nice crowd on hand today. Beautiful sunny afternoon. The clouds are leaving us. It's a good day, good day rather, for uh, Homer Dome baseball, huh? Kim attempting the point after again. Kick is up. Kick is good. 9 9 to go in the third period of play. Sam Marin increases his lead 14 to nothing. We'll take a look, hopefully again, at the touchdown play to Mifsud. Mike, he was wide open in the end zone. Well, Mifsud 6-2, and Sarlotti, as you said, is 6-3 himself, so they could float that ball up there high across the middle. Is an easy catch for a touchdown. And plus, they had Mifsud uh, on a linebacker. With that type of coverage, he was able to break a loose, break away rather from the uh, linebacker to get himself open. Beautifully timed play. So Brett Kim will be kicking off for Sam Moran. Deep will be Shakarian, along with number 44, Davey. <coughs> for the Redwood Giants. You get a good look at the both deep men. We're about set to go once again. Good high kick by Kim. Davies got it on about the 10. Found a little room up the middle. Breaks outside. He was able to get away from that one tackler. He may have had some running room for some pay dirt. But the Mustangs held, and the Giants will start first and 10. Good position at about the 33. He returned to the 31-yard line, first down. Kim getting another good long kick. And there's Davey taking the reception, looking for that blocking. He doesn't really get much, but he finds his own hole and bulls forward for some more good field position. As you said earlier, the Giants having good field position all afternoon. We have an official's timeout. 
as they're checking the piece of equipment, I believe. And I think they're missing a mouthpiece. You must play with that piece of equipment. First uh, offense, the officials will notify it, notify the player, and just use it as a warning. The next time, you can be penalized on the play for unsportsmanlike conduct. The Giants starting first and ten. Ray's handing off inside now to Hunt. Grinds out about three yards. As that solid Mustang defense gets started. You see Stewart now quarterbacking for Redwood. Well, there's Hunt going right to the middle looking to get something going for the Giants. And he picks up about three or four on the play. Hosmer comes in now for Soho. The tight end position. Second down and a long six to go. They're in a single wing setup. Davey on the inside drives forward, picks up three. Looks like on this series here that they're trying to establish a running pattern as Rays is not in at this series. Well, again, Stewart handing off, and as you said, I think Redwood is trying to establish the run early in the second half. Their passing game was going pretty good. But they were failing a little bit on the ground. Third down and four to go. The set up once again, single wing. Handoff going outside, and the outside linebacker, Carroll, and a little help from Spenrad, the defensive end, snuffs out that play for Sam Moran. The Giants will have to turn this over. Brett Schaefer looking for running room, which he doesn't get, as you can see. That's about the second or third time this game Schaefer's taken the ball and taken one step and being pummeled. That particular series didn't do much for the Giants. It's a tough one for them. As they were trying to establish some running room, did not happen. 6.53 to go. Third period of play. Hosmar. Well, Hosmer back to punt. Gets off a nice high kick. Picking it up is 44, Russ Daly. And boy, he takes a couple shots, but the Mustangs will start just shy of the midfield line. It's an important series now coming up for the Mustangs. One more score here in this period might make it a little tough now for Redwood to come back. That's right, Tucker. They got about six and a half minutes left in the third quarter, trailing 21 points. You can make it tough the way they've been moving the ball so far this afternoon. McCoy split out. Handoff going fake. Liberta, he's going to McCoy downfield. Wide open. No, he wasn't that open, I shouldn't say, but he overthrew his receiver. Van Gwen back defending for the Giants. Well, Sarlotti looked faking the handoff there, looking for McCoy over the middle. And McCoy just had his man beat by maybe a half a step. Pretty good defense by Van Gren. The pass was overthrown, though. Second down and 10. As the Mustangs try to open this game up. Minutoli, one wide receiver split to the bottom. Up at top, he's got Brett Carlin. Going outside, Phillip Solardi going back up the middle. Pass is incomplete to Carolyn. Nice defensive play that time by Slater. The Giants are still trying to hold on. Third down, 10. Again, the Mustang line is doing a great job giving Sarlotti some time, and he tries to thread that ball in there amongst three or four Redwood defenders. Redwood picking up the plays well. Solardi back to pass. Flushed out of the pocket, coming after him and going to take him down. Great to play by number 63 for Redwood. And we have an injured player. And that was Hosmer, rather, 83 for the Giants on the tackle. Well, Sarlotti sees he has nothing going in the air, and he just puts the ball under his arm and tries to make the most of it. And Redwood greets him. The defensive backfield's getting a little wise now to that open pa passing game of Sam Marin. And Hosmer and company put the pressure on, as Mike said. 
Stewart deep for the Giants on the play as you take a look at the injured ball player. Stewart back deep for Redwood. Carolyn kicking now for Sam Marin. Gets off on nice. Boomer. Stewart calls fair catch. Let's it go. Hopefully it'll get into the end zone. Yes, it does. Good play there by Jason Stewart to let that ball roll in the end zone. I'll tell you, Tucker, that was a major league punt right there. That thing was high with the spiral and everything. So the Giants will take over on downs, first and 10, starting from their own 20. As you get a look there at Brett Kim, the place kicker for the Mustangs, who also plays linebacker on defense. Next week, MCAL football continues on Viacom TV 36. We'll have the league-leading Marin Catholic Wildcats hosting the Drake Pirates, led by Aaron Albachton and company. Handoff going to Schaefer. Off tackle, picks up maybe three yards. In on the tackle, Nikolai Caroline Spinrad for Sam Marin. Again, you'll see Brett Schaefer taking the handoff going outside and then cutting back into the middle, and he picks up about two on the play. Sam Moran sticking with that 3-4-4 defense. Playing it very well. 5-12 to go in the third period of play. This has been a fast-moving ball game. Adam Salzman at the bottom of the screen. You get a look at Matt Reyes, who's back in. Jason Stewart's put out to the top. Reese back to pass. He's going deep now to Stewart. That's going to be intercepted by McCoy. Once again, if they don't realize by now, as an explosive receiver as Jason Stewart is, Coach Zecklin and company are setting up an umbrella around him. Well, Reese definitely looking for Stewart again downfield. And the ball just a little bit overthrown. But good defense by McCoy for the Mustangs. Pretty soon, those other receivers are going to have to be hit. And Salsman and Soho, they're going to have to break open to take some of that pressure off Stewart. And I'm sure Coach Bracken knows about that because he's got a talented receiver in Stewart. And he's already shown he could be a game breaker, but they're going to set that umbrella defense on him. So the Mustangs take over first and 10 on their own 48-yard line. Solardi dropping back to pass, looking downfield. Got some time outside. Phillips complete. It's down into Giant territory at the 46-yard line. Solardi's getting a lot of time back there, Mike. Yeah, again, as I said earlier, both offensive lines are doing a good job for their quarterbacks. Solardi gets a good long look at his receiver, and makes a good pass for a gain of six yards. Second down, four, coming up on four minutes to go into third period. Minutoli split out to the bottom of your screen. Carolyn split at the top. Solardi going back to pass. He's got wide open to the outside. Carolyn going for the pass. It's complete. Touchdown, Mustangs. Brett Carolyn just strode down the sideline. He passed Saussman. And the pass was just perfect. Well, that's a combination I was talking about at the top of the show. And they completed beautifully there. Perfect pass and a stroll to the end zone for six. Now, in that situation, as you take a look at Coach Ross Bracken, that situation, the defensive backs had to be, but should have been back a little farther to compensate for the speed. But Carlin's got such long legs, it's hard for anybody under six feet to stay with them in a race, not unless they're quick. So Brett Kim in once again to attempt the extra point. At the 358 mark, Sam Wren scored their third touchdown, second in this period. Kim gets it up, scoots it over, no good. So a break there for the Giants. Looked like they had a little bit of trouble with the snap. The snap was low, bouncing off the ground. And Kim kind of tried to chip it through. Get a look again at that beautiful pass there. Salati to Carolyn. Again, lots of time. That's picture-perfect pass. That puts Salati for over 140 yards on the day. And Carolyn, 94 yards receiving. Salati is over 1,000 yards in passing this year in the conference, making a strong bid for player of the year. And he's but creeping on just about 1,200. Excuse me, Tuck. I tell you, some of the players we've seen this year qualify pretty much well for it as well. 
You've got Kyle Berry at, San, at Marin Catholic. Solardi here. You've got a guy in Roger Sweeney at San Rafael. You've got some outstanding defensive players. And definitely, as they've been talked about from the beginning of the year, this season in the MCAL has been the year of the quarterback. Brett Kim to kick off. Gets off a high line drive. It's going to be taken down by Saussman, and he gets wrapped up and spun around. On the tackle there is for the Mustangs is LaBelle on the tackle. As you're going to see, Salzman takes the ball, trying to get upfield, looking for a block. He gets one block right there, and then here come the Mustangs to throw him to the turf. Adam Salzman gets hit pretty hard on that play. First down and the 23. Now I wonder if Redwood will try to pull out the Benz play sometime today. Uh, we were talking about that in the first game we did this season. Rees hands off inside now to Schaefer. Might pick up about four yards on the play. Well, Brett Schaefer taking the handoff again. He's done a lot of work today. Look like he got a bit of a face mask right there, but the Mustangs get away with it. Second down and five. Rays calling out the signals. Fake handoff inside. Going outside now to Hunt. And see if they call that a completion. Yes, they will. And that might be enough for the first down. We'll have to wait for the measurement if they have it. Well, there's Matt Reese rolling out to his right. And there's Hunt. And boy, Marin, or Sam Marin, rather, is putting on some tremendous hits here in the second half. They're trying to get the chain set up here. And they're going to put it on the sideline to measure. It looks awfully close to a first down. The men of the chain gang coming down to measure this one. And we'll see how this is going to turn out. The envelope, please. They're going to be short, look like about maybe the length of a football. Or more, we'll see here. Might be a yard. And this short, about a yard. So it'll be third down. Yard to go for the first down. 234 to go in the third period. Sam Moran, 20. Redwood, nothing. Man, is it hot today. Let's go, Red! Practically every game we've done this season, it's been 80 degrees at least. We'll forget about Mill Valley on, <laughs> on that note. <laughs> Sub 80 degrees. <laughs> Big play for the Giants, third down. Get a look there at Matt Rees. Hands off inside, diving forward as Hunt. They've got the first down. Hunt for a first down. Well, Hunt gets the handoff here and just bulls forward. That's all they needed was a few yards, and he got it for him. Actually, they needed less than a yard, but he got him a few. The 13, Nelson in for the Giants. Nelson and Stewart are the wide receivers. As Reese calls out his signals. Handoff going to Schaefer. Beautiful block right there set up by Felix as he took Carolyn out of the play. And it enables Schaefer to pick up about four yards on the play. Brett Schaefer earning all of his yards this afternoon. He's averaging a little over two per carry in today's game, but he's worked tough for all those yards, carrying defenders with him almost every time. Under Coach Ross Bracken, this team's going to develop. And uh, they've had four coaches in four years, so it's made it kind of tough for the players to get used to a certain system. And as they call a timeout here by Redwood. Timeout, Redwood. We got 137 to go in the third period. But once a team gets accustomed to a coach and learns the system and it 
carries on from freshman players moving up. It helps to develop a strong squad. Sam Moran has had that for years with Zeckman. Redwood's going to get that with a coach like Ross Bracken as he's here for a few years and able to recruit some of the players there. Those guys look familiar. I don't know who they are. Whenever we let them get on the field, we're in trouble. Who threw that tomato? <laughs> you can use that hula hoop to play a little football, too. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Mike, you got any uh, players you could think of that you might think might be players of the year other than what we mentioned before? Or a good shot at it? You covered it about all, Tucker. As you said, it was, it's definitely the year of the quarterback. We left one out with Drake as a good quarterback and Aaron Albachton. That's right. But I, I think the quarterback. I'm not saying which one, but I think that's going to be the guy for the player of the year. We've seen some outstanding talent within the conference. There's been some good defensive teams as well. Had a lot of shutouts from different teams. The defense has been very important in the league. I'm still waiting for the Benz play, though. No one's ran it this year yet, but I wouldn't count it out. <laughs> Reese in motion, throwing beautiful catch there by Schaefer. Starting to nickel and dime their way up. This team gets on the board. That, that will definitely give them somewhat of an inspiration there. Well, Matt Reese just dropping back right here, and it's your basic screen pass. Brett Schaefer going down for the ball and makes a good catch. Schaefer's got, got some good hands. Good soft hands. How do you know that, huh? Who told you about that? Did anybody tell you he had soft hands? When did this happen? You're not answering me. I'll take the Fifth <laughs> Amendment on that one. <laughs> First and 10, Giants 47-yard line. Reese under some control. Hunt up the middle. He picks up some yardage. Hunt's down to about the 45. Nice run there by Hunt. Paul Hunt, six-foot senior. I'd say that was Redwood's strongest-looking run of the afternoon. Paul Hunt taking the ball, going off the left side after a couple good blocks. And Redwood just quite could quite possibly have the ball rolling right now. 56 seconds ago in the third period. And you made a good note there, Mike. They get a shot up there of the plane going above with a sign. Raise fumbles! Mustang football! Just when things were going good, Reese never got a handle on the snap. Brett Kim on the recovery for Sam Moran as you get a look there. Well, the sign says, Redwood Varsity, go fight, win, we love you. you got pretty good eyesight there. Uh, for uh, 68 alumni. What school did you go to again? I went to this when I went to school. We ran the Benz play quite a lot. Is that right? So I don't really want to <laughs> open the door to yeah, that one. If you say 68, you're in trouble. You know. <laughs> yeah. But the Benz play has been around a long time. <laughs> anyway, first and ten for Sam Moran. Up the middle, Phillips. Great tackle. They're stopping on the play as Schaefer. A little help from Freitas. I tell you, the Giants fans are having a good time out here today. And that's the end of the third period of play. From Redwood High School in Larkspur, the Sam Moran Mustangs over the Redwood Giants, 20 to nothing, fourth and final period coming up right after this message. signs are often misunderstood. Dazed behavior, loss of awareness, aimless movements. You on something? Hidden signs that may point to a common type of epilepsy. What's up, coach? Early recognition and treatment of seizures can help keep kids like Evans on the team. Get the facts. Write Epilepsy Foundation of America, Washington, D.C., 20013. Underway with the fourth and final period here from Redwood High School. Sam Marin, second down and seven. Sweep coming outside to Phillips. He's got some running room. Goes up the alley, breaks a couple tackles, still moving. Nice tackle there by number 78. And that's Colin Thomas, the 5'11 senior on the play. I'll tell you, uh, the key to this play is this block you're going to see right here. Number 12 just getting pummeled out of the play right there. Good job by the San Marin offense hitting some good blocks. And that's what makes for a good run. 
Cannon coming in for Brown for, Sam, for Redwood on the front line. The Mustangs looking to improve their record to three and two in conference play. Salai back to pass. He's going across the middle. Pass is incomplete to Mifsud. And that'll bring up a second down situation. You see Mifsud wanted to catch here, but I think the official made a good call. We'll see. Here comes Sarlotti's pass. And it looked to me like it skipped off the ground first. And the official was right there. He was in a tough position to have that one called in his favor. <laughs> So the Ponies, better known as the Mustangs. I guess, I guess the Ponies would be the freshman team. Salat rolling back to pass. Going out in motion is Carolyn. He's being chased on the outside. Salat, he is. He hits his man, Phillips. And there's a penalty flag down on the play. Actually, there's two of them out there. This might be offsetting penalties. Legal motion called against Sam Moran. Roughing the passer against Redwood. Got another fight of penalty. We'll play this down over again. Sarlotti buying time for himself right there. He's got some good pursuit on him. But again, finds an open receiver on the inside of the Redwood defense. Redwood giving that cushion again. That's a break for Sam Moran. Because if it had not been that late hit by Cannon, Giants would have been able to take five yards away from Sam Moran and make it second down and 15. We're nearing the 11 minute mark of the final period. For this game to turn around, Redwood needs a big play right here, like an interception and run it back for six. They gotta get something going. Sam Moran still going with the starters. There's been some changes in the backfield for Redwood. It's a lot, quarterback keeper up the middle. He breaks a tackle, rolls for about five yards. Stopped on the play there by Hunt and company. Well, there's Sarlat, straight keep all the way. And he rolls up for a six-yard gain. So the Mustangs grinding out the yardage. Third down and about four. Sam Moran motoring their way down the field. McCoy is down at the bottom of the screen. You get a look there at Solati. At the top, you've got Carolyn, Miss Butt, the tight end. Going outside now to Limby, and uh, he recovered the fumble. Or is that that's an incomplete pass? It's got to be. That'll bring up fourth down, and I wonder if Brett Kim will come in and kick. Well, there's Limby looking for that screen pass. And it looks like the ball is just a little bit too easy. Sometimes you can throw a pass too soft and make the guy wait for it, and you lose some concentration. There you go using that soft again. Now, how do you know about this soft, man? Let's see. Here, let's go. Carrying up the middle now is number 25. It's Keith Phillips. Picks up the first down for Sam Moran. There's Phillips taking the handoff going up the left side before he's drugged down. Redwood doing a good job getting to the ball carrier, but they're having a little bit of trouble bringing him down once they get there. First and 10, Sam Moran. Slotty going across the middle. Miss Bud gets the tip. Beautiful reception by Miss Bud as the ball was, t ball was tipped by the defender. And he was able to make the catch. Well, again, that's just a case of being in the right place at the right time. The ball being tipped and Misfoot just having to be right there makes a good catch to bring it down and a good break for the Mustangs. The Mustangs move deeper in giant territory. The ball, the 15-yard line. Going outside now, Carolyn. He breaks a tackle, taken down to about the eight. Van 
Rich Sarlotti getting his offense really going now at that pass in the run. There's another throw to Carolyn. And the Mustangs just bowling forward closer and closer to the end zone each play. Stack up there as a run up the middle. As Phillips carrying on the play for the Mustangs. Vangren making the stop. Well, Phillips looking to go right off the left side there, and Redwood does a good job in their pursuit, and they take him down. Giants needed that play there. Ball now is on the seven yard line, third down and two. Minatoli and Carlin split out as he comes in motion now. Solardi goes up the middle. He may have fallen for the first down. First down now for the Mustangs on about the four yard line, first and goal. Rich Sarlat with the keeper just going straight forward over his center. Good blocking by the center, and they pick up the first down. Impressive drive by the Mustangs here in the fourth quarter. This drive started in the third quarter. Cerati rolling out, got company. Almost intercepted there by number 12, Zagani, 5'7", sophomore defensive back. Well, Sarlotti rolling around to his, his right, the bottom of your screen, and Zagani just knocking down the ball. Good play. As there was a Mustang receiver in the end zone behind him. Seven fifty to go in the fourth and final period. We may have a legal procedure called against the Mustangs. Offsides against Redwood. Offside Redwood half the distance. Nothing is going in favor of the Giants at this point. On the screen. Second and goal to go. Seems like the whole left side of the defensive line was offside. Red Kim going through the middle, touchdown, Mustangs. Well, Sam Marin running right on that left side of the Redwood line, figuring the lineman might be a little tentative after that penalty, and he just bowls in for six. That's Brett Kim's second touchdown today rushing. Kim will attempt the extra point for Sam Moran. And he throws it for the conversion, rather. Tried for a two-pointer to Phillips, and he couldn't hold on to the ball. So it's 7.39 to go in the fourth quarter. Sam Moran leads 26 to nothing. Mike, you have any more information on area roundups and scores? Uh, I got the uh, Tampa Pius water polo team. Victors over the Redwood Giants, 12 to 11 in overtime. Rich Nolan and Gary Harms led the Indians in scoring with three goals each. Tara Linda Trojans defeating the Novato Hornets also in water polo, 9 to 6. And the Drake Pirates shutting out the Mustangs, 11 to nothing. Brett Kim will be kicking off for Sam Moren. Deep are Adam Salsman and number 44, Rick Davey for Redwood. The Giants, the Giants rather, will try to muster up some offense to get on the board. Kim hits a low line drive, bounces up right to Davey.
Stopped in the play by number 40, by 84, Mifsud. The Giants will take over from there. So Matt Reason Company will try to get something started here. And the Giants are going to call a timeout. They try to get their offensive scheme situated. It's going to remind her next week, MCL Game of the Week will feature the league-leading Marin Catholic Wildcats coming off a 7-6 victory over Sam Rafael at home, trying to clinch the division title against the Drake Pirates. And it's next week on MCAL football. I look for that one to be a great game. Drake impressed me on our last telecast we did. Good, tough defense, and their offense looked pretty good, too, with Fregoli and Albachton leading the way. Wildcats led by Kyle Berry, Frank Greco and company. A very potent offense attack. So does Drake. They showed in their last game of the week. And that's a ball club that can provide trouble for anybody. Festive atmosphere here at Redwood High School. It's their homecoming today. Great turnout for today's ball game. We're down to 7.25 in the last period. Resets them up. Hunt and Schaefer in the backfield. Handoff going to Schaefer. He'll pick up about three on the play. Here we see Schaefer taking the handoff again. Gets a good block on the inside there. And picks up another three or four yards for the Giants. Hunt comes in to replace Davey, the fullback position. Stewart and Schaefer will be split out to the bottom of the screen. Up top, double wide receiver situation. Salsman in motion. A reverse, and Schaefer fumbles, and 51. Mike Monpas picks it up for Sam Marin. Just when he tried a little bit of flash, nothing comes of it but a turnover for Sam Marin. Well, here comes that reverse again, and Schaefer just never got his hands on the ball. That's four turnovers for the Giants. That's a tough break right there. You don't like to see that happen. Especially a team trying to get up on the board, trying to run a reverse, and it backfires on them. Today a game is going to be called against Sam Marin. Today a game penalty called against Sam Marin. New quarterback in for Sam Moran. Number two, Craig Waugh. Waugh is a 6'2 senior. Getting in some action. He's giving the handoff, and the Mustang's just running straight forward, trying to run that clock out. Coming in now is 21, Steve Smith. Going to a wide receiver. Nikolai coming in as the tight end. 35 is Dave Ayers. As some of the second stringers are starting to come in now for Sam Marin. Carrying on the play that time. Looks like Ayers. Oh, Craig Wall giving the handoff. And as I said earlier, the Mustangs just trying to trying to tick seconds off that clock. Keeping the ball on the ground and keep your arms around the ball. Also in 28, Graciano and number 11, 
That is Graciano number 11 and 28, Mark Glassmaker. Phillips on the outside. Gets away from the pursuit for a little while, but great tackle on the outside by number 25, Rick Vangren. Well, our stat man, Bill Benz, has just told me that Rich Sarlotti was 14 for 18 on the day and over 170 yards passing. So another good day for the San Marin quarterback. Phillips on the uh, carry on the outside there. Great defensive play by the Giants. It'll be fourth down and about 14 to go. 4.35 to go in the final period. And we might have a delay of game again. Delay of game, game. Penalty against San Marin. As referee Pete Dardis makes the call. The Mustangs are backing up more and more here. And with the new squad in, sometimes the penalties do accumulate a lot more. We've got a unit out there that are not used to playing with each other. And the first string center, if he's still in there, he and the quarterback might have a little problem with the cadence call. Glassmaker and Steve Smith are split wide receivers. Phillips in the backfield. Going deep. Watt tossing to Smith. Touchdown. Mustangs. As Smith gets past Slater in the backfield. Nice pass. Going to Steve Smith. So that puts the Mustangs up 32 to nothing. Well, Craig Waugh showing he could throw the ball also. He just rolls around to his right. Throws a nice pass to Steve Smith, who had his defender beat. And the Mustangs score again. Kim in to attempt the point after. At the 416 mark of the fourth period. Officials are getting the ball set. Kick is up, drives through, and it's good. Sam Marin has the lead now 33 to nothing. Sam Marin 33, Redwood nothing. Well, again, Craig Waugh coming in for Rich Sarlotti, throwing a nice spiral downfield. And that looked pretty good. Kim will set up the kickoff once again. And deep for the Giants. Deep for the Giants will be number 80, Adam Salsman, and number 12, Jason Stewart. Stewart deep for the Giants, along with Adam Salsman. Brett Kim to kick off. Coach Zeckman's got to be happy with his ball players. And the kick by Kim is a nice high drive going back deep to Adam Salsman. He's moving toward the outside. Beautiful break of tackles there. Nice little run there by Saltzman. As you can see, Kim puts the ball pretty deep again. Saltzman taking it, looking for the wedge on the left side, the lower portion of your screen. He needed a block right there, and I think he would have went a little farther. So not a bad run back for Saltzman. I think we have a personal foul call on the play. A penalty just uh, occurred on the play as well. We're not sure what player they called it on, but it doesn't matter. They made the call. I'm sure Coach Brackham would just love to see the guys get on the board here to avert a shutout. 
They played well today. Despite a few penalties, the Giants have not played bad football today. And they're an up-and-coming ball club. They've got a few juniors and sophomores who are going to work out some of those situations. And they'll get it together. Sam Moran is going to be losing a lot of top-notch players this year. We're getting a look right now at some of the guys who are on defense that will be heading that cast next year. Guys like Daly and Brown. Returning veterans like Brett Kim and Brett Carolyn. Taking the ball on the snap is Schaefer. He goes outside. Boy, he takes a shot from 21. And that's Steve Smith. They ran a single wing offense that time. Well, as I said earlier, Brett Schaefer really taking a, a beating this afternoon. He runs around that right end, and bam, he's met hard. Schaefer, a junior, good, tough player. He's going to be a good one for him next year. He's a good one for him this year. Schaefer coming off the field now. He's injured on that play. And Hunt with Van Gren in the backfield. Reese, the quarterback. Along with Davey, they've got a uh, three-man backfield. And now the Giants call another timeout. Seemed to be a little mix-up back there. The setup for the Giants. Next game for the Mustangs will be against Richmond, whose only victory in the conference has been over here, the Redwood Giants. And Redwood travels to San Rafael to take on the Bulldogs as we get down to the final three weeks of the season. Once again, reminder, we'll be at Wildcats home field over in Kenfield, Callahan Stadium. We're in Wildcats against the Drake Pirates. In motion is Davey. Handoff coming in the outside now. Running with it is Davey. The senior running back, six foot. Good ball player. Well, Davey trying to get around the end there. Breaks one tackle, breaks two tackles, and is met by two San Rafael defenders, but a good run. Third down, 18 for the Giants. The ball is on the 21-yard line. Nelson and Adam Salsman split out. Reese going quick over the middle to Hosmer. And he picked up a big chunk of the yardage needed. It will be fourth down. Down to 240 to go in the period. That was a nice pass again by Matt Reese to Hosner. Hosner, good catch. Reese has had a good afternoon. A couple drop passes and penalties hurt him, but all in all, Matt Reese has done a good job this afternoon for the Giants. The Giants looked like they were going to go for it, but Hosmer is back to kick the extra point. Penalty flag set up on the play. Hosmer gets a good kick off the daily. He slips a little bit. And Adam Salsman, along with Hunt, there to make the tackle. But there's a flag to contend with right now at this situation. A legal procedure called against the Giants will be declined. Mustangs will take over. A minute 59 to go in the final period of play. A 
we'll see what uh, Chris Waugh will bring out now. Good look there at the senior. Handoff going to Liberta. And there's no room that time. The Mustangs are just content to run out the clock. The experience of the Mustangs have taken control of this ball game. They lead 33 to nothing over the Redwood Giants. Handoff going inside to Brett Kim. The carry for Sam Moren. As you said, the Mustangs just trying to run out the clock. Brett Kim carrying the ball, going straight forward and holding onto the ball is the main job there. Third down and about eight. Brett Kim once again the carrier on the play for the Mustangs and they will turn over the ball. We're down to a half a minute to go and play. It's been a tough ball game. Both teams have displayed good sportsmanship and played their hardest in this ball game. I want to thank all the fine people here at Redwood High School for their help in today's ball game. And to Coach Ross Bracken and his staff. And that's the end of the ball game. The final score from Redwood High School. The Sam Wren Mustangs 33. The Redwood Giants nothing. Be sure to join us next week on MCAL Football Game of the Week. Where we'll present the Marin Catholic Wildcats against the Drake Pirates. The MCAL Football Game of the Week is produced by Gary Wosley. Director, Gary Wosley. Technical Director, Jana Barto. Audio, Jackie Sissel. Audio Assistant, Tom Daly. On cameras, Chris Johnson, Al Baylock, Mark Gonzalez. In the VTR, Kevin Courtney. Assistant Director, Tracy Rees. Production Assistant, Robert Gust Gust Gustavino. For Mike Forenzi, I'm Tucker Rivers, and also our statistician, thanks to Bill Benz. Thank you all for joining us here on Viacom TV 36. The MCAL Game of the Week is a Viacom TV 36 sports presentation. So long, everybody.